Hello everybody, I am back to talk about something we were talking about using OEM only and the problems that that presents because you develop these uneven ink levels after a certain amount of time. Colors are not used at the same rate, so you will have different levels, which causes you to change cartridges a lot more often. Every time you change one cartridge, you generate waste ink because the printhead has to be reprimed. But if you choose to refill and you choose to use the method that we are recommending here, you will know what I'm talking about. If you choose to refill, eventually, say you have a set of original cartridges, you're going to have to flush them before you can add whatever ink you choose to use. Okay, so for flushing these inks on these cartridges, these new CLI 42 inks are just tenacious as can be. And they're very difficult to wash off the sponge simply by running water through that cartridge. Of course, you will modify it. You will have to remove, this was unmodified. You will have to remove the ball that's located here. That ball is a factory seal ball. You can see the port right there, right underneath. You remove with a blade, you cut out that little circle of uh, this mylar tape, remove it, stick a little tiny um, nail into that ball and just pry it off. Underneath that ball is a spherical seat. That ball just sits there and there's a little hole through that seat. The common plugs that we use for these printers, which is one of these right here. So what you need to do is drill the hole out, the base of that seat with a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill bit. Follow me so far? Once you do that, the plug will actually fit sort of like a press fit through that hole. We chose 5 30 seconds of an inch specifically for that because then the plug will contract and basically compress itself through that drilled hole. You get a perfect seal. You will not have any leaking of ink while your printer is sitting idle. That will happen if that plug is not sealing perfectly well. And so what, that's what we need to do. Once we do that, once we achieve the removal of that ball, we need to flush all of that ink. If I run just water through here, it's not going to do the job. So I need to use something like Windex with ammonia or Windex with ammonia and extra ammonia. And what I do is with a 100 ml syringe, I load it up with this solution. And with a special tip that will fit through that now freshly opened hole, I inject that. It's sort of a pressurized type system. Once you get that sponge completely turned kind of bluish color, you know there's no more yellow. If it's bluish with no hint of green, the yellow is gone, believe me. And so at that point, I let it sit for a couple of hours and then I get another syringe with just water and I force the water several cycles of this. And that sponge will then look like this. Once the sponge is spanky clean, you can go ahead and with the same syringe and just air in it. Again, put it on that hole and push that water out as much as you can. And then let it sit in a dry, well-ventilated area, sort of warm area if you can, if you can set it up that way, to dry. And before you can actually use that cartridge as a refilled cartridge, you need to let it dry to the point where it's about 13.6 grams. That is the magic weight for that cartridge. That means that it is now dry and ready to be refilled. If it has a higher weight, a heavier weight, it still has water in those fibers. And you're going to either dilute the ink that you inject or block it. That's what happens. And so what I do, it takes about two to three days in a dry environment, well-ventilated, warm room. Um, you keep weighing it and you will see the weight drop, drop, drop from about 15 grams down to four, you know, 14 and a half to 14 and 13, eight. And yeah, you hope that it will dry a little bit more. Eventually it will reach 13.6 grams. 
and that's it it will not get any lighter okay so you know that cartridge is now ready now if you really want to do it quicker i have seen food desiccators being used for drying cartridges basically it, it works really well but again it's quite an expense unless you're producing cartridges for sale so that is it perform the modification make sure your drilling is done correctly actually i i've even done it manually where i insert that drill carefully and i spin it all i need to do is remove that little bit of a seat which is less than 130 seconds of an inch in thickness drill right through that it opens up that hole it allows a plug to get in you want to be able to basically do this let me see i got one here with a tab type plug it's actually i can do this and it's not going to fall out you see that the plug is tightly attached this cartridge will not leak when you refill the cartridge for the first time you're going to have to wait for that sponge to become saturated you will see the ink literally going into the sponge from the bottom and then migrate to the top as you do that the liquid portion of that ink right here will begin to drop it may drop all the way to the bottom add more ink very carefully this is the initial refill and let it sit let it balance itself out at some point the levels will not drop any longer that means that both chambers are now balanced hydraulically balanced put the plug in do not allow the ink to go higher than almost touching the bottom of that plug that way you will guarantee you will not get any any liquid ink inside that so-called vent if it does that you will have a lock in other words fluid cannot flow out now once you finish that what you need to do is just this once take your cartridge remove the orange clip that's this clip right here that you will buy hold it over a cup with the plug still attached nothing should drip out not a single drop that means that plug is sealing as it is supposed to be perfectly well now you remove the plug now you will get if everything is okay you will get a pretty constant drip about one drop every second put the plug back on it put the clip back on it and now with the clip attached remove the plug again and top off the liquid chamber because you lost a little bit of ink and that cartridge now has been basically proven to be able to deliver ink at the proper rate and that will prevent any kind of streaking or any kind of artifacts while you're printing let me leave you with this you're not supposed to do this the fact that you can get away with it you better be very thankful you can do that you're not supposed to do this once we take that ball out we have basically severed the factory's built-in hydraulic characteristics of that that cartridge okay we've actually interfered in a way with the way the factory designed that cartridge for providing the printer with the proper ink flow but it still works it still works so be aware of that if you get any problems well hey c'est la vie as they say you're not supposed to do this but we can if we do it correctly you want to avoid all of this buy a set of already pre-service cartridges from rick johnson okay just do that they are perfectly modified perfectly clean and pretty much guaranteed to accept ink and deliver ink and that's what you want to achieve you want to achieve near perfect ink delivery that way your printer will never know the difference all you got to do before you refill of course is to always reset that chip and for that you will need to buy a resetter okay so that is it just be aware that processing these if you choose to do it yourself it's a pain in the i don't want to do it i can of course if i feel like doing it i can do it but why 
in three days, <laughs> in the three days it takes for that set to dry, you will have the new set in the mail. It comes from California to the U.S., anywhere in the U.S. So why would I want to put myself through that torture, basically? Anyway, that is it for now. Yes, you can refill, and yes, you can get great results when you do so. Okay. An unrelated little last tidbit. Don't forget that you're not going to get the level of longevity from any, and I mean any, third-party dye ink. Okay. Go to my videos about ink fade, and you will see what I'm talking about. You can mitigate this problem by some simple little processes that you put your finished print through. Once it is done, you treat it in this manner and it will last many, many, many fold compared to if you do not treat it. And by that I mean a spray. That's it. Or frame it under glass. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, as always, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.